What did he say? Good afternoon, Coach. Mike Barber from the Richmond Times Dispatch. Back here in the middle. Where are you at, bro? Middle right. Okay, good. Uh, defensively, you guys obviously returned some strong players in the secondary. Uh, how do you feel about the growth on that side of the ball and, and what that unit can do for you? I want to get to your question, uh, obviously, particularly uh, about defensive personnel. Very comfortable there. But I first want to mention we had a tough loss uh, in our Hokie family the last couple of days. We lost our assistant tennis coach, uh, young man, 36 years old, wife, five-year-old. And as everybody knows, we're a close group in Blacksburg. So I want to just send prayers and condolences to the Sayer family, Coach Thompson, and our tennis program uh, before we move forward. So defensively, uh, we lost a couple of leaders, obviously, with Chamari and Dax. But I really like the speed and athleticism that returns on that side of the ball. We got a fast group. Coach Marv has them racing to the football. Uh, we've really honed in on our fundamentals and techniques. We've got a good plan to create more explosives through personnel, through scheme, maximizing what we do well. Coach Gross, stay on the right-hand side. Might be hidden. If you would, please raise your hand in the back right. Raise it high, please, so we could see you. Thank you. Got you, brother. Billy Ray Mitchell, Sunday Saturday. Good to see you, Coach. Uh, so Virginia Tech heads into this season with 35 new scholarship players, almost 41% of the roster. How have you structured this offseason to empathize trust and chemistry amongst a team that will have a ton of newcomers? Yeah, I'll say this. This is the most important thing to me before the portal, before name, image, and likeness. Our culture was going to be the foundation of who we became as a football team. So protecting that, uh, that's about relationships and trust and hard conversations. Uh, that, that's how we're building this thing. And that's just another area that we have to be great in. We've got to be open and honest. We've got to work through it. Um, you know, bringing older guys in, transfers in like Ali, the first thing that happens is they have to be right for us regardless of the talent. Secondly, we got to know everything about them that we can. We got to do our homework. You spend two, three, four years recruiting a high school player. You're going to spend two, three weeks sometimes recruiting a transfer player. So the more we can know about a guy, like Ali, his background, we knew a ton about, a ton of people that know him, guys on our team that knew Ali. There was less risk. We knew a lot that made us feel good that he would be in that locker room and be what we need him to be, would be like-minded as well as the talent we needed to, to impact our roster. So it's not easy. It takes a lot of diligence, uh, a lot of research, a lot of homework, making sure we bring in the right guys. To your left, first row. Coach Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call, DT.com. Obviously, for a head coach in this collegiate climate, you have NIL, you have the transfer portal, all of these things going on that cause you to re recruit your players while you're bringing them in, and then year one, year two, year three, and so on and so forth. Being new to Virginia Tech in the sense of this past season, as well as everything else going on in college athletics, how do you balance all of that? Yeah, honestly, it's still about doing what's right for our kids, our staff, and our, and our program, our university. Uh, it's about what we believe in. Uh, I wasn't going to take the opportunity at Virginia Tech without the platform to do it the way we know it needs to be done at Tech. A uh, shared vision from our president, Dr. Sands, to Whit Babcock. Uh, the support has been phenomenal. To do this thing the right way, the way it needs to be done at Virginia Tech, what's right for us? And uh, so there's a lot of things that can send you on a detour. But we're going to do things the right way. We're not cutting corners. And uh, that gives us the pathway. You know, we try and eliminate the gray. Uh, there's too much nonsense going on in college football in our game. Uh, we want to be forthright with our players. We want to be forthright with our staff. Uh, we've got a platform to do that at Virginia Tech. And uh, so I'm thankful and appreciative of the atmosphere that exists where we can do this thing the right way. Uh, because it is challenging right now. But uh, we've got good people. It goes back to bringing in the right staff and the right players that want to be at Virginia Tech for the right reasons. That has to come first. We want to be competitive in NIL. We want to eliminate guys going to the transfer portal. 
But in the end, it's about first and foremost, do you want to be a tech? It has to be the environment that they're looking for. We don't song and dance guys to come to tech. We do the very best job we can to have them understand what this experience would look like. And if it's for them, that's awesome. That's great. If it's not, I'd rather know now than in a year when they want to hit the portal. So we're going to get the right guys. If we do our homework and we recruit the heck out of a young man and his family, whether he's a transfer of high school, and they choose to go somewhere else, I'm okay with that. When a young man, particularly from the state of Virginia, chooses another school and we didn't invest the time necessary, and maybe they, not, they don't fully understand the experience or they're choosing not to come to tech for a reason that's maybe not true or valid, I have a problem with that. So that's why it's important to us. Ninth grade, eighth grade, let's build relationships. Let's make sure this family knows what we're all about. And in the end, you know, we'll take the chips where they lay. Coach to the right, fourth row, gentleman in green. Kenton Gibbs, Locked On ACC. Um, you talk a lot about relationships and having the right staff and all that. Coach Price has been one of the hottest assistants in college football for a few years now, and he's still with this team. Can you tell me what it means to have a coach like him that is Virginia Tech through and through and, and that you know has meant so much to the program and, and how you retain a guy like that that you know people are always probably clawing at or, or calling his agent trying to put it in the word with? Yeah, Coach Price is a great asset to our staff and to our program, to our university, him and his wife. Uh, she's in the Hall of Fame at Virginia Tech, and uh, J.C. was an All-American when I was coaching at Virginia Tech the first time. You talk about a guy, if you, if you cut his, his, uh, his veins open, you got maroon and orange coming out of that dude. Um, you know, for years, J.C. and I were buddies you know, after leaving Virginia Tech, just watching him come up through the coaching ranks and all his time at Marshall. Uh, I talked to James Franklin many times about J.C. and trying to get him involved at Penn State. So you know, we're very fortunate to have J.C. He's a Hokie through and through. He does a great job with our defensive line, as Josh Fuga, I'm sure, sure would attest to. So uh, he's an asset, you know, in every way in what we're doing. Like myself and some others on our staff, he's been part of championships at Virginia Tech. He knows what it looks like. We're going to go back to Mike Barber all the way down the aisle to the right. Uh, hey, Brent, I wanted to ask in terms of the offense. Uh, last year, obviously, a, a lack of playmakers. You've addressed some of that in the transfer portal. What is the vision for the offense, and how confident are you that that unit will be more productive? Yeah, I think first and foremost, um, just another year for Tyler Bowen as a play caller. Uh, I know what it's like when it's year one, and there's growing pains. I think, you know, I think it was probably a little more challenging because he wasn't in that room um, down the stretch. He spent a little more time with Coach Glenn and, and the quarterbacks, but uh, moving in there full time has been a real asset. It's been the right thing for us, the uh, right thing for Grant, for Kyron, for the young quarterbacks. But at the same time, we had to go out and get some explosive playmakers, and we did that. Three guys in that wide receiver room, Ali being one of them, you know, a, a tailback. Uh, we just did some things that were necessary to allow us to, to have a better opportunity to create big plays. So, you know, schematically, you know, we're, we're, we're really working hard at our tempo, at our formations. You know, how can we be simple for our guys in what we do, but challenging to defenses? That, to me, that's always a sign of good coaching, either side of the ball. But uh, we've got some good things we worked on all offseason. You know, again, you talk about explosive plays, but to me, it really starts with our run game. We couldn't run the ball last year, and that, that hurts the ability to throw the ball, hurts the ability to protect, a lot of things. Uh, hurts your defense. So, you know, it starts there. And uh, we've, in, we've had some improvement there as well. Got five minutes left with Coach. We're going to try to get to two more questions. Coach, front row to your right. Lever KT, CFB Nation. How's it going, Coach? Um, you've coached pretty much every positional group um, on the defensive side. You yes, did sir. your research. Yes, Thank sir. you. Uh, from the likes of Charles Tillman and Micah Parsons. How difficult is it, being you head coach and you have people in place, how difficult is it when things aren't going right defensively for you to not Give me that. Let me do my thing. Yeah, you know, I have to trust the coaches. Um, Coach Marv played for us at Vanderbilt, was a captain. 
Uh, got incredibly high football IQ. Uh, he's cut from the same mold. Uh, he's been brought up in this system. Uh, so a lot of faith there. Uh, a couple guys on that staff, Pearson Prelo, played in the system at Tech. Um, you know, Sean Quinn, this is our third stop together defensively. He knows what I want, what that needs to look like. Derek Jones and I coached together at Memphis and have been friends a long time. And then we talked about Coach Price. So there's a lot of men in that room, a lot of experience on the defensive side of the ball that we're all like-minded. And that was really important to me in the hiring process, that, uh, that they saw things the way I did and what good defense needs to look like. That's why it was important me, for me to be in that room last year. I knew it would be challenging. But to get my thumbprint, to make sure everybody's on the same page at how we're going to do this on that side of the ball. But uh, I still get a little shaky when I walk by that staff room. It's hard for me, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I might grab Fuga once in a while and get him straightened out, make sure he gets in the right gap and steps with the right foot. But, you know, it's, it's all, I'm excited about being just the head coach. I really am. I need to do a better job there. And I'm looking forward to being there for our offense, our special teams, and our defense. Coach, your last question. Still the right side, third row. Sorry, left side. <laughs> Hey, Coach. Chris Heidel from Herbert Marriott Radio in Baltimore. Um, I have some family down in Virginia. What's the landscape of the Commonwealth of Virginia with all the good football teams like JMU and BMI? What's the landscape now for you guys trying to compete with those good programs? Yeah, we're the flagship school in the state. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, you're talking about a program with eight straight years at 10-plus wins and played for a national championship. So I'm not completely sure about your question. But there's some good college programs in our state. There's good high school football in our state. That's one of the reasons we are really making a giant effort to recruit the state of Virginia. There's too many good players that have been going other places. Coach, thank you. You can switch places with Nick. We'll spend about five minutes with Mr. Gallo at the podium. Same rules of